What's going on, YouTube? This is what Josh do, and I've got a... I want to say quick, but it's definitely not going to be quick. Sorry about that. This is a video on Pluggable's new folding keyboard. It's a full-size keyboard, so it does not cramp your fingers. It is quite large. And on the back, you can go ahead and pause that and read it for yourself. I'm doing a voiceover, which is something I'm not very comfortable doing, and I'm not used to doing, so you can tell that. <laughs> so just unboxing the product here, and then it's a little sleeve. We're going to take it out and show you what it looks like. Inside the box, there's just a little micro USB cable so you can either charge or you can put it in host mode and use it as a wired full-size keyboard. It has a magnetic clip on it so it can go ahead and shut and it doesn't open on its own without a little bit of force. It's got a power, state, and caps lock button so you can go ahead and see what mode it's in or what is on and it folds up very nicely. There is a link to the product on the actual device itself. All right, so it has been a few days since I initially recorded that very quick unboxing because I was planning on using this at work. And I can tell you what, I'm very, very excited to bring you guys this video today. This isn't like, oh, this is a brand new product. I want to make a video and that's it. It's just a quick little unboxing. This is truly more than that. I've been using this thing for a few days now and it is a pleasure to work with. There's a lot of really cool things you can really use this with, and it's just in such a convenient package. I have cargo pockets, and I have no issue carrying this thing. Uh, after having my pocket for a full day at work, it's, you know, there's a time where you want to pull it out and put it somewhere, <laughs> but I didn't want anybody to take it, so I kind of kept it in my pocket. But it is pocketable, and it is very portable, and a lot of fun to use. A couple little things I wanted to talk about that maybe could be improved on, but we'll get to that later. So here we go. Here's the thing after it's been unboxed. So it's got a magnetic little clip here like you saw in the unboxing, and then you just take it out and there's the keyboard. Now this was a little bit confusing to me at first, uh, but I finally figured it out. And then I saw Pluggable's actual video on it and it, then it made more sense. So you, you do it like that, and then it's a little stand. At first, I was trying, like, okay, does it go like this? Does it, does, I mean, how, <laughs> was it quite sure? But it actually goes like that, and then you can put your phone in it, and you could be sitting down and able to type on your phone. Like, I actually use Google Allo, Al, Al, and I literally just send messages like that <laughs> it's actually pretty cool or you could do this as well and it's got a little thing here in case you want to like have it at a different angle so there you go it can be moved down at a different angle now one thing i have an issue with is and i'll explain to you after i show you the actual keyboard itself so we're gonna unfold it here and then it turns on so it turns on and those lights will tell you what state it's in now, to switch it over to Bluetooth, you hit FN and then the Bluetooth button, and then it's on Bluetooth. And then to pair it with a device, you're going to simply hit FN and then this little button here, C. Then it's going to be in a searching state, and you can tell your device to connect to it. All right, what I'm going to go ahead and do is set this up as a new pairing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit FN the Bluetooth button, FN the pairing button, and then now it should be in pairing mode. I can go ahead and pair up to this thing right here. I think an issue I may have had earlier was the fact that I did have this paired to the PS4, and for some reason it wouldn't reconnect back over to this. Now, the really cool thing about this keyboard is you can pair it to your PS4 under Bluetooth. So I literally have my PS4, I have my TV stand, and I have this right below the TV stand, and I can type out a message on my PlayStation 4. Now, I'm assuming this would also work on the Xbox One, but I'm not quite sure if it doesn't work via bluetooth you can hook it up through wired there's a little port for charging right here and it can also be used for a direct connection all you would simply do is on the keyboard here you would hit fn and then this little usb icon there so fn and then two and it switches it over to like host mode or something so now that it's connected we can open up google keep here and we can type out Today, I plan on going, oh, my bad, going to the store and picking 
up some milk. Now I have Swift Key on, so it's trying to autocorrect things, and it's actually not too bad. Like if I do today and I hit space, it's going to autocorrect it to today. So sometimes it's annoying. Uh, like if I do a word and I hit space, sometimes, or like say I hit the little period button, it automatically puts a space in. So I've got to mentally tell myself, someone who types very fast, don't hit space again. <laughs> Today, dot. And it's a new thing. So tomorrow, and <laughs> every time I hit dot or something, it automatically puts a space in because it's SwiftKey doing some work there. You could take SwiftKey off or switch it to the uh, default keyboard and you won't have that issue. But this thing has been insanely cool. To switch it to Android mode, you hit FN, Android. Now, if I hit things like this uh, recent apps button here, it's going, or the whole, I guess it takes me home. And then uh, I can hit search, and it brings up search. A guy was uh, asking me about the uh, Note 3 battery, so I went ahead and <laughs> tried to find my video on that thing. Apparently, you can't buy the charger for it anymore. I don't know why they stopped selling that. So what we can do is hit control all and there's a command for cut, so let's go ahead and cut that. And then there's a command for paste. So what do we have to do? Control A, Control X, Control V. We can do that as well, but we don't have to. Now, maybe if I, let's try giving you guys a better view, possibly. There we go. That's, that's a little better. Okay, so let's do Control, or no, what's, Oh, there's a button here for all. So you don't even have to hit control A. Just hit this one and then hit cut and then hit paste. <laughs> I love this thing. This thing's a lot of fun to use. I can go ahead and lock my screen on my phone and I can unlock it as well. Of course, I have a password on there, so I can't uh, just simply do it. I'm just going to go ahead and put my fingerprint back here. And for those of you asking, the Nexus 6P is still currently my favorite phone of all time. I have my Note 7, I need to return it because of the whole issue where <laughs> I can't not turn my phone on without a nagging notification the entire time using it telling me that it's going to explode in my pocket. <laughs> so, uh, even when I didn't have that fear, I still really enjoyed using my Nexus 6P and my Note 7 was a second, you know, like a close thing for me. Anyways... This is a really cool keyboard. This is awesome. You can play and pause music. It should launch Google Play Music if I hit the play button. If it does not, I can go ahead and just simply uh, go down here and choose Google Play Music. And you can see the last thing I was uh, listening to. I don't know this band. I listened to Breaking Benjamin, and I asked for a similar artists for Breaking Benjamin, and I got this. So I can go ahead and hit the uh, next track button, and it skips the track. I, I need to go ahead and pause it. I can go ahead and pause it. Now, will it work when the screen is locked? We will find out. Let's hit play. It does. So when the device is locked, I can still go ahead and skip the track. Pause it. Now I can adjust the volume to go up. Or I can adjust the volume to go down. This is a really cool keyboard. This is awesome. Let's, let's take a little screenshot real quick. And boom, we have a screenshot. <laughs> this thing is really cool. So you can literally take this, make it a completely portable setup here, and take it with you anywhere you go. And now you can send messages very quickly and very easily. A lot of times I don't want to text people because I am not a fan of spending 19 minutes typing out in text to people when I could just call them, say what I got to say, and be done with in three minutes or so. I really enjoy having a keyboard and something like this that is full size. There is the keys are not little. Let me get my Chromebook. Here's my Chromebook here, dusty thing. All right, here's my Chromebook. Let's see. Look at that. Would you look at that? Just, just look at it. Look at it. This is an Acer, like, 11-inch Chromebook or something like that. This is uh, my only Chromebook I've ever owned, and I absolutely love this thing. It gets used more than my uh, Asus gaming laptop does. <laughs> it's just, it's it's fast. I can watch 1080p YouTube videos, and there's no lag or stutter or any, any issues ever. Anyways, I can go ahead and sync this up to here if I want to, and 
control my Acer laptop with this keyboard as well. One of the things I was really wanting to show you is the USB host mode. So we're going to go ahead and take a... Now, I, I'm, I'm making this video longer than I want it to be. I originally was hoping it would just be a few minutes long or less. But this is the uh, Note 7 connector for Type-C. So I'm going to go ahead and demo what this is like. We're going to disable Bluetooth here. And now the Bluetooth is disabled, I'm going to go ahead and connect this to the bottom of the keyboard. And by default, it's going to try to go into like charging mode. Oh, well, yeah, let's, let's show you the, how to check the battery life uh, before we end the video. So right now, it's just simply in charging mode. What I'm going to do is hit FN2, and now it's on, and it's in host mode. So I can go ahead and type out whatever I want to via USB. If I unhook this, it stops working. My normal keyboard pops back up. So this is something I can use on anything that takes a USB connection, like the PS4, the Xbox One, your computer, your phone, whatever. And if you're trying to use it on a device such as a uh, the Windows tablet PCs, like the Surfaces, you can also get Pluggable's little travel mouse. And I use this on my computers, on my Chromebook, and on my daughter's Chromebook. And inside the box is simply two batteries for it, instruction booklet, and the little mouse. Put the batteries in there, hit the connect button, search for available Bluetooth devices. This is purely Bluetooth. And boom, now you've got a full-size keyboard and you've got a little mini mouse. And this thing is, it's small and I have large fingers, but I have gotten used to it. I actually edit freaking videos with this thing. <laughs> and it's... Not bad at all. And it's even got a little cute DPI button if you want to change the sensitivity on the mouse. I will have a link to both of these products in the video's description below. Please click show more to expand the description and see all the available links. Now, let's go over the battery. So if you want to check the battery status, this might be a little confusing to some. So I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, demo it real quick. FN battery. It's going to blink. Two blinks, three blinks, four blinks. That means it's a full battery. Apparently it blinks in 25% increments. So if it only blinks one time, your battery's low. If it blinks three times, you have 75% charge. If it blinks two times, you have 50% charge. So that's how you tell the state of the battery. Now, the couple complaints I have is that when you're trying to use it, like say you're in a chair and you're trying to use this on your PlayStation 4, when you try to type, this thing likes to try to fold up and move around. I don't, there's no way, uh, like when it's in your lap, I, I usually have it on one knee like this, so that way I don't have it on my lap like this, and then when I go to press down, I'm closing the keyboard up. There's no way to lock it in place, which would be pretty cool if they could do that. Or, I was thinking, yet better yet, maybe something like this, where I could keep this thing from folding up, like maybe a lever, or, or not a lever, but something that I could do to, I could put this in my lap, like a table, like a tray, and I could use, stop it from folding up in my lap. So picture your knees being here and between your legs here. This is literally going to just do that to you. So you have to use it on a flat surface where it's not going to do that to you. That's only like a, a minor thing that I wished maybe could be improved on in the future. Maybe they came up with an awesome idea for how to keep it from doing that to you. Another thing is when you first turn it on, it'd be kind of cool if it remembered the last mode it was in, like Bluetooth, USB, Android, Windows, or the other thing that we won't talk about. <laughs> it'd be cool if it remembered what state it was in. So we, we would need to go ahead and hit this, and then we would need to go ahead and hit Android, and now we're good to go. It's honestly not a big deal. There's an instruction booklet that tells you exactly what buttons to press and how to troubleshoot this. So don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I've gotten used to remembering, okay, turn it on, hit FN, hit Bluetooth, and then I'm good to go. If I'm using it on a new device, I need to go ahead and hit the C button as well. It's not like it's hard to remember that, and they've got neat little things to show you that, so you don't forget it. This is my review of the pluggable Bluetooth folding keyboard. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Sorry, this was a longer video. I, for some reason, am not capable of making short videos. 
And I am working full time. I actually have to work today, and I cl- I work a night shift. Well, a I I'll be home at like two, three in the morning, so <laughs> you could consider it a uh, a night shift. And then I will sleep all day, and then go to work again tomorrow, and then go to work again the next day. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, devices don't pay for themselves, and I really want to get the Google Pixel, and I really want to get the LG V20, and I really want to get all these phones so I can make more videos. But I can't do that without money, and I have to work to have money. So. That's what's going on with my life today. Sorry for the lack of videos. Hopefully one day that will change. But as of right now, I'm only going to make videos on my days off. And if I have something to make a video on, that I feel you guys are going to enjoy and actually watch. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.